we're now going to move from looking at state legislation to looking at the Commonwealth powers to compulsorily acquire land. Now there's a fundamental difference between the way that the Commonwealth acquires land by compulsion to the way that the state does virtually the same thing. And that is because the states in Australia have the prior title to all land in Australia, uh, at least prior to private freehold or leasehold interests, not prior to the Indigenous owners, of course. When we move to the Commonwealth, however, the Commonwealth Government actually doesn't have a original or a fundamental right to the land in Australia at all. The Commonwealth Government exists as a result of the federation, the combination of the individual states. And so the states in Australia are actually the origin of political authority. And they then have contributed certain powers and authorities to the Commonwealth. When it comes to land, the Commonwealth may acquire land through compulsory acquisition, but it does not resume land. And the reason for this is that you resume something by taking it back. You take back something that originally owned, that originally you owned, and the state was the original owner of all land in Australia. Whereas the Commonwealth, when it needs to acquire land through force or through compulsion, it is doing simply that. It is compulsorily acquiring the land which individuals have or some private entity has as a right originating in state law. The rights of the Commonwealth to compulsory acquisition are set out by statute and this is the focus for this module. Much of the Commonwealth legislation for compulsory acquisition will appear familiar because it largely echoes what you find in the state resumption legislation. However, there's one point that does stand out as particular in the Commonwealth legislation, even though it is followed up and often finds expression in some of the state legislation as well. And this is the notion of just terms of compensation. And this is covered in section 5131 of the Commonwealth Constitution. And it's worth your while paying particular attention to it. While the notion of just terms seems fairly straightforward and common sense, if you like, reasonable, on closer inspection, it really does go to the heart of what valuation is all about, especially in terms of the notion of putting a dollar value which is just and fair. And so this question of just terms of compensation has given rise to quite a considerable amount of debate down through the years since it was first used and continues to be contentious to some extent. Those of you who might want a little bit of recreational study might like to find a copy of the Australian film called The Castle. Many of you may already have seen it. It turns out that this movie, it's fairly light-hearted look at exactly this notion of compulsory acquisition and the whole notion of just terms of compensation, even though you don't find it being stated in the movie terribly much. And so I do recommend that if you haven't seen it before or you haven't seen it for a while, take it out one Saturday night and have a little bit of a look at it maybe a bit of a giggle, uh, but just keep in mind that this notion of just terms is a very important one that not only applies to statutory valuation, but also to the very notion of valuation and value right at the very heart. And so I've also given you the opportunity to read a paper that goes a, a little way into exploring some of the complexities when it comes to using the expression just terms to describe the activities of a valuer. And so you'll find that on the module as well. 
I hope you enjoy it and find some uh, connection between what a valuer does and the notion of justice.